All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yah by Shema Shah by Shema Kakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to all the occupied are pushing the word of sincerity and the truth. It's the brother Bars are from Great Millstone, Atlanta. Yeah, and I just have this lesson on um, this little excerpt going into our forefathers um, and the level of patience that they had. You know, um, you know, each and every one of them, you know, exemplified huge volumes of of faith and patience because their their belief showed that they were, were willing to wait and um you know uh uh that's why I entitled it as such the power of patience because there is definitely power there's a a, a godliness and a, a strong aura behind actually uh long suffering which that's another term for patience because when you you're patient for something you're constantly suffering until that was just fulfilled, you know. And um, without further ado, I'm just going to jump straight into it. It says, Noah waited 120 years before the predicted rains arrived, right? So when, um, you know, in the genesis, the genesis of things, so to speak, you had uh, Noah and uh, his, his sons and their wives that were the only families to which was really the only house to be saved uh, during that time frame and before Noah um, or, or the, he the Heavenly Father actually made it rain, flooded the, the, the world, the old world, he, he expounded the spirit of, of truth unto Noah and told him that he would do that before that, which was prophecy. So, which the word predict goes into prophecy, prophesying too. You know, pre is before. So, in that span of time, Noah was uh, prophesying. He was doing the work. He was he was telling Israelites that it was going to be a major flood that was going to occur in the in the uh, land, and to get ready for it. But the mass majority of the people, they didn't uh, hear the words of Noah, and Noah didn't lose patience with Yahweh by Shemal, or excuse me, Yahweh at the time, of course. Yahweh the Most High uh, God, he didn't lose patience. He was suffering for over 120 years, you know, because, of course, the lifespan of men were, were uh, a lot longer. And that shows you the volume of patience, man. And you got certain men that, that get um agitated and aggravated after being in the truth for two, three years, man. You know, th this truth deals with patience and long suffering. That's why you have to... Um, Always think about the long haul. All right, you got some men that's in it for for short term. This this is a lifestyle, man. Being an Israelite is not just a a, a trend. All right, something you wake up to, and um, you know, you put it on like it's a fashion fashion week, so to speak. You know, you'll have Jake when uh all when the trends and fashions come out, everybody jumps on top of it. But as soon as it fades out and something else comes and springs forth. They're into that, you know. This truth is not like that. This truth is a lifestyle, all right. Whether whether people want to be a part of it or adhere to it or not, you know, this is the truth. And um, you know, Noah knew the words of the heavenly Father were faithful and true, all right, and, and as well as others. And they didn't um, they didn't slide to the left or the right. They constantly endured and went. Uh, and, and fulfilled the works through uh, orally pushing, all right? Our forefather Abraham, which he was known as Faithful Abraham, says Abraham waited 25 years for a promised son, right? So he, he waited. His woman was uh, barren, you know, uh, Sarah, you know, and he got the son of the promise, you know. And, and 25 years, these aren't short spans of time. These are decades, all right, 120 years uh, for Noah is a century, man. And he never, uh, you know, thought less. He never lost faith. He said, man, you know what, maybe I'm bugging out, man. I've been doing this for over 20 years, man. You know, I haven't woken up uh, one individual. I, it was it hasn't been two individuals that, that heard the words of um, this this uh, the, the vision, so to speak, that I'm outlaying. You know, maybe I should... Um, you know, go back to the to the real world, so to speak. Just, but he he didn't believe that. He believed in the words of the heavenly Father, and he continued in them. 
Abraham, his his time duration of patience. You know, it says Joseph waited 14 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Right. So Joseph even patiently suffered for a span of 14 years before he got exalted. He was thrown in the pit. He was uh sold from his from his uh brothers, you know. And he was sold into Egypt, you know, he eventually went to Egypt and he was a uh, a criminal. You know, he got a he got a, a charge with a uh, basically wanting to commit adultery, which we already know he was framed. And um he he didn't lose faith in the heavenly father. You know, I best best believe while he was in those pits, he was praying constantly. He was giving his supplications and he was and he didn't waver. That's why the Lord seen it fit that he got free from uh Egypt and he was a top man in Egypt. All right, of course besides uh Pharaoh, he was Pharaoh's go-to guy. And through his visions and through the spirit of the heavenly father working through him, he made it where uh Egypt never had to um suffer that famine. All right, he he prophesied the abundance of corn to uh stock up on the abundance of corn and that's what made Egypt uh survive through the harsh dearth or the harsh famine and um it made Egypt a major empire. So it says Job waited perhaps a lifetime, 60 to 70 years for God's justice. Right? So sometimes hey, you got to you got to actually you know, invest your life into this thing, man. Job waited his whole life for the heavenly father to um reveal uh, uh the the spirit of uh justification. All right, because of course, as we know, Job goes back to the Hebrew word ayash, which means persecuted, and we all know that Job lost it all. You know, Job lost his family. He got boils. His woman uh came against him. You know, his his land basically was compromised. He constantly was being bombarded by by tribulations and hell, but he still uh, kept his faith and his integrity unto the end. And what happened? The Lord restored everything unto Job. So we have all these books, the ample amount of books within the Bible. The Bible goes back to the word biblios, which means collection of books. We have all these books that um, outlay all the um, examples of patience. And that's why we have to read it as it is written. Blessed is he that readeth. Because when you get into our forefathers and you get into the patience and the grounds of faith today withstood and held, you, you start to... Uh, you know, embody those characteristics, all right? And you need those characteristics in order to be long-suffering because who, who gained anything overnight? You know, these athletes, these top uh, moguls and businessmen, you know, they started in the garage and they suffered, you know, whatever, well, as far as uh, businessmen, but athletes, you know, they, they constantly, you know, strove and uh, uh, dedicated themselves day by day consistently. They trusted in the process until... Their, their works or, or their, um, you know, the actions that they invested manifest. So it says God prepares leaders in a slow cooker, not in a microwave oven. And that's so true. You know, this this is the, uh, as it is written, the fire of uh, affliction. You know, it's known as the furnace of adversity. Whenever you're cooking anything in a furnace, even though the temperature is very, very hot, it's a process. All right. It's not just throw it in, throw it out. The the heat, the, the um you know, the uh, temperature has to uh, ferment and, and cook through to um, burn through the, the, through, through the uh, impurities in order to fully uh, cleanse whatever substance is being uh, brought through that furnace. So it says, more important than the awaited goals is the work God does in us while we wait. Right, so the goal is, is set. We already know that the kingdom of heaven is to come as it is written, but it's always about what us putting forth action behind our faith because we believe. That's why it says we believe, therefore we speak, and speak is a form of working, prophesying. All right, there's even power in in just speaking the words, the oracles of the heavenly Father. That's why going back to Noah, he mainly his his works were defined by what his the actions of him prophesying and telling. You know, and even Abraham prophesied, you know, about Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, he went uh, to that land and he, he spoke the word. So continuing on, 
says weight and depends and excuse me deepens and matures us levels of levels our perspectives and broadens our understanding tests of time determine whether we can endure seasons of seemingly unfruitful preparations and indicate whether we can recognize and seize the opportunities that come our way right and you got certain men that don't want to stand the test of time and that's why they fall out showing that they don't have the fruits of the spirit you know and it's it's all about what endurance that's why the, the lord speaks that all throughout to endure hardness as a good soldier of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai and to be constantly suffering all right long suffering I'm a, you know I keep speaking about that but that's a major aspect in this truth is to suffer for for a duration long duration you know not being a short term like it says a microwave Israelite you know you you pop in and pop out you know this thing is about slow cooking you know that's why you'll go through things You'll go through tribulations, and it seems like the tribulation is just resting on your spirit. Why? Because the Lord is teaching you suffering, man. And you have to endure it. You know, you, 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 know, you as it is written, it's, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's a rock. You got some men that just want to cast the burden off quick. You know, but at, as the burden weighs on you, it makes you a um, reasonable and worthy lump. All right, so this is Second Thessalonians 3. And I started. Three, but the but the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil, uh, evil, right? And to, to keep something stab, established, it has to be tried. You know, you have uh, these different buildings that's erected, and the first buildings that were structured and, and built, they knew that they had a, a, a perfect project after seeing how it withstood what weather conditions, how it it withstood. Um, you know, all kind of turmoil and tribulations and seeing the stability and, and they say, all right, that's the best way. All right, because when you build these houses, you have to level it. You know, you have to, um, you know, build it upon the cornerstone as it is written, uh, properly fortified, make sure that it's, um, you know, uh, uh, stable. And then the spirit of individuals, individuals can actually live and dwell therein. So, you know, the Lord is building us slowly but surely, you know, and anything that like the de even de dealing with buildings, buildings going to get thrown up overnight. So how much more your spirit that's being edified? First, you have to break down the word uh, destroy means to um, deconstruct. So as you destroy and you rebuild, you know, it, it that that's a, a process of taking time because you're, it, you're actually taking out spirits while inputting better spirits. So it says, and we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of, of the Most High and into the patient waiting for Yahweh Shai. So this is the waiting game, you know. That's why it's written, the patient waiting of Yahweh Shai. And we have to be patient, you know, because the men of the Lord, starting off with the, the disciples that actually seen Yahweh Shai, past they were in the spirit of waiting they knew they had to wait for um yahweh Shah to come back they had to wait for the prophecies while simultaneously prophesying of yahweh Shah's return and you had certain people that didn't believe that tried to discourage their faith you had uh like i said let not the incredulity of them trouble you you had unbelievers scoffers as it is written in peter's walking after their own lust but those men didn't uh deviate they kept going on a fast track with patience even unto death. So we have to keep that, keep those same faculties and live it, fulfill it. It's Ecclesiastes 7 and 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Right, so you have to be patient, man. You know, don't lose patience, don't lose hope. We're prisoners of hope, prisoners of faith. And that faith we have to hold until whatever we say is fulfilled is, is that not written in isaiah the 62nd chapter that you wouldn't uh give no rest until zion is made a praise in the earth zion or israel is not a praise in the earth our, our uh nation isn't praising being uplifted it's being downtrodden so we have a lot of work to do you know to to work constantly and consistently for zion to be praised and to be um exalted on high all right, 2 Corinthians 6 and 6. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by
by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by love unfeigned. So th that those are, are pure aspects of each and every uh, one of us that we have to um, have to uh, tap into. The pureness of the word, purifying ourselves, purifying our hearts by going and deep, di diving deeply into the word. The knowledge of Yahweh by Shema Shah, the suffering, all right, which, you go, like I said earlier, is, is the patience, the kindness towards just, uh, the brotherhood, all right, and, and the nation, the elect of the nation by working, by the Holy Spirit, by love unfeigned. And that love unfeigned is love unchanged, all right, because you can't love the Lord one day and then change up and, and, and uh, not love him. And how do you love him? By keeping his commandment. Well, one of the commandments is doing the work of Yahweh by Shema Shah, pay, patiently. And faithfully teaching unto the end. And as you endure unto the end as it is written. He that endure to the end the same shall be saved. So you know this is just something I had to go into. You know the power of patience. It's very very powerful. Pray for more patience. Pray for more endurance. You know so, to, so that we can actually make it unto the finish line. I want to end by giving all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh by Shema Shah by Shemar Kakodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of the great millstone. And Shalom Amakim.